The jungles of our world have long been at the centre of many mysteries. Its vast expanse and hazardous undergrowth leaves many to wonder what exactly lies at the heart of that tangle of vines. Occasionally, discoveries are made that answer some of these questions, while others only leave us with even more uncertain puzzles. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting jungle discoveries and mysteries. The Yafo Tribe Benedict Allen was only a 57-year-old dad and BBC presenter when he travelled into Papua New Guinea in search of a few mysteriously remote tribes. On this trip, he crossed the central mountain ridge on his way to meet the Yafo tribe, who lived in the jungles of East Sepik, surrounded by crocodile-infested waters. Known for the practice of headhunting, a tradition where the heads of intruders or enemies were decapitated and preserved as trophies, it was a dangerous situation to go in alone. Along with the fact that the tribe was armed with bows and arrows, no one could predict how they would react to Alan. This was not the first time that he would meet the Yofo tribe. On the first occasion, he wrote that last time the Yofo greeted me with a terrifying show of strength, an energetic dance featuring their bows and arrows. Then he writes that, on this occasion, who knows if the Yofo will do the same, nor do I have an obvious means of returning to the outside world, which is somewhat worrying, especially at my advanced age. After being dropped off by a helicopter, he went off-grid. But then, on October 11th, he posted a photo of himself on Twitter that announced he was marching off to Heathrow and told people, don't try to rescue me please, where I'm going in PNG, you won't ever find me, you know. By the time it came to the point where he was supposed to start his journey back home, there was no trace of him to be found. He had even missed his flight. Because Alan had no phone or GPS, there was no way to contact him. For many, this was considered to be unlike him, and quite odd. A search was quickly conducted to find him, though it was a challenge. Papua New Guinea had no mobile coverage and was dangerously uncharted, so it would not be easy. However, a helicopter did manage to locate him, and he was finally reunited with his family. Alan was found with a case of malaria after several storms had broken out and claimed that he was not lost. He wasn't able to find the Yofo tribe again. Since that incident, the modern world has still yet to hear about anything of the remote tribe and its mysterious ways. Perhaps because of the dangerous conditions or out of respect, we may never uncover the secrets of the Yafo tribe. One of the oldest burial sites in the Amazon Researchers believe they have stumbled across what may be the oldest burial site yet discovered in the southwest Amazonia, tucked away within northern Bolivia in the Llanos de Moxos region of the Amazon rainforest. This site contains graves that are estimated to be a minimum of 6,000 years old and presumed to be older. Buried here are five humans, as well as the shells of snails and the bones of fish and various mammals. This discovery is more important, as they believe this site was created 6,000 years ago, which entirely changes the timeline of when we believed people had begun to build settlements within the Amazon. The site was found on the forest islands, situated in Ia del Tosoro, La Chacra, and San Pablo. An excavation and further study led many researchers to believe that these so-called forest islands provided a safe asylum and a point of refuge to ancient Amazonians fleeing the flooded Llanos de Moxos savanna throughout the rainy season, making these islands seasonal settlements. This discovery has also given insights into the sophistication of these societies, as burials of this sort, along with the traces of food remains and of fires having burned, have implications of a settled society protecting their territories. Before this discovery, we had been operating under the assumption that the people living in this region were hunter-gatherers, though this updated perspective suggests a series of more complex societies instead. This means our timeline could have been 10,000 years out, meaning these groups and societies were established and complex far earlier than we originally thought. Lead author of the study, Jose M. Caprier, 
assistant professor at Penn State University, explained that these burials tells us that the indigenous groups within the Amazon had learned to adapt and transform the landscape in beneficial and suitable ways. These signify far more advanced living standards than we had predicted were possible at this time. Furthermore, the discarding of waste, be it food or what was once living, and then returning to stay in the area as a seasonal settlement, meant that the soil composition had been changed slightly, becoming more fertile. This allowed for thicker growth of vegetation and higher land elevation. Jose M. Caprier elaborates, explaining that when their preferred food sources and supplies ran low, the indigenous populations were able to domesticate plants, including peanuts and sweet potatoes. This excelling knowledge meant that only mere generations later, societies capable of establishing roads were prevalent. Caprier concludes his research, explaining that the study of these landscapes helps us to see the interaction between humans and these biomes, and gives us an insight into the cultural and biological diversity that is rife within them. Hiru Onoda Hiru Onoda was a Japanese man who lived from the 19th of March 1922 to the 16th of January 2014. He fought in the Second World War as Imperial Japanese Army Intelligence. The Imperial Japanese Army functioned as the official ground armed forces of the Japanese Empire. It was headed by the Japanese Army General Staff Office and the Ministry of the Army who were both subordinates of the Japanese Emperor. Hiru Onoda was not only notable for being a part of the Imperial Japanese Army, but rather for his courageous and brave act in August 1945, which was towards the end of the war. Subsequently, after the war ended, he spent another 29 years hiding in the Philippines. This was not an act of cowardice, but rather an act of commitment and patriotism to his call to duty. This he continued until he was relieved of his duty by an order of the then Emperor of Japan, Showa in 1974 alongside a presidential pardon. Up until he was relieved of duty from the Imperial Japanese Army Intelligence, he served as the second lieutenant, and just like his rank, he was also the second to last person to surrender, with the last being Teruo Nakamura. Aside the professional occupation of being a military man, Heru Onoda was also a cattle farmer a profession inherited from the Kamikawa village, Lakso district, Wakayama, Japan, before he got enlisted to the Imperial Japanese Army Infantry at the age of 18. Onoda was an intelligence officer alongside some other officials who were instructed to do all within their might to obscure all attacks of the enemy. Not too long after, his co-intelligence officers had either surrendered or passed away. This facilitated his promotion to lieutenant, of which he then ordered his men to take to hiding. He documented in detail his life as a fighter in the war in an autobiography titled No Surrender, My 30-Year War. This autobiography was written shortly after his return from the war. Though not documented in his autobiography, accounts of locals have it that he took the life of persons in the town where he went into hiding. Upon his return, Anoda was quite displeased and bothered with the decline in the traditional values of Japan. In 1975, he finally left Japan for Brazil, following closely the example of his elder brother to rear cattle. Subsequently, he got married in 1976 and assumed a leadership role in the Japanese community in Terenos, Brazil, which was known as the Jamic Colony. He also held various educational and enlightening camps for different young persons across Japan. On the 6th of December 2004, the Brazilian Air Force awarded him the Meritorious Medal of Santos Dumont. Also, on the 21st of February 2010, the Legislative Assembly of Mato Grosso do Sul honoured him with the title of Cidadão, which means a citizen. Sadly, on the 16th of January 2014, he passed away as a result of heart failure coming from pneumonia complications. But what do you make of these jungle discoveries and mysteries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.